Hey everyone, Clint Butler here. Um, I did the um, last SEO this week, or yeah, Monday, and I showed my breadcrumb schema page, and I asked people to go and leave comments, and some of you did. I just want you all to know that I did see those comments, and uh, and I am acting on them. However, there's some of you have asked for like I, I, what I was looking for was give me examples of sites that. Um, you want to see breadcrumb schema templates for not, you know, I want to see a template for e-com service for software schema. What other one complicated homes and multi-type services, overlapping geo areas, new construction websites. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. And then uh, e schema for e-commerce again. So, what we're going to do is I am going to write these templates and I am seeing your comments. They're just not displayed on my website. It actually keeps spammers down. So you guys get to communicate with me and then um, I'll debate just later on if I want to start showing comments. But for the most part, I generally don't keep comments turned on. Just again, spam, right? So um, you can leave them. They just don't show up. For you, I get to see them, and then I can have conversations with you, reach out to you later or whatever, or do what I'm doing here in the videos. So just know that if you leave comments and you are asking for template types, that uh, I am seeing them. So continue to do so. With that being said, a new post is up. You guys did not see that in uh, this week's episode. I put it up uh, afterwards. So it's a website, website schema. Uh, I did a little bit of testing some stuff out so you guys can also check that out. This is a uh, Notebook LM uh, recording. I uploaded it into SoundCloud. I have the um, syndication set up into for my podcast as well, but I it didn't trigger that. And then there's some new features in SoundCloud since I've been in there last uh, that I want to play with to, to check out some syndication stuff. But that's there. Um, I'm going to um, do some stuff with the schema that's actually on this page to show that off to you in the video. So this is um, so let's get into this. This is how to implement website schema. It is a step by step guide, but really all you really need to know is just you know use JSON format, and then here's the beginning. <laughs> all right. If you want to know how I'm building these out and how I'm using the schema.org to, to do it and et cetera, et cetera, you can get my course right here. Um, that's been available for quite a while now. I teach you how to use schema.org, the actual website, and write your own. We go through how to use at graph, et cetera. Um, but, um, yeah, so there's my my pitch for today. Anyway, this is the basic website schema. This is pretty much what you're going to see out of all of the uh, plugins, etc. Not a lot of people take it seriously and uh, or use it properly. But this down here is my template. This is a full template. Um, I write these uh, manually. And so I don't use this template in and of itself. This is for you guys to kind of, you know, get used to uh, thinking about how I'm writing website schema and then what I'm doing with it. This template will be the only schema that is present on the homepage. Um, and then it will be used across the website because every web page is part of this website. So in that You'll see that when we get into the web page schema and interconnecting things. But with that, I wanted to to walk you through this template. You can use it, and you, it's really I, th I think it's pretty easy. It's pretty self explanatory. So this is how I do it. Add ID is the the connector. This is how you connect all your other schemas to each other. And so I use the website URL and then the hashtag website. Website URL, site name, headline, and alternate headline. Uh, name is generally what I'm putting in the title tag. Headline is generally what is in the H1 or the first H2 if you have, if your title tag and your head and your H1s are the same. And then alternate headline is generally another version of the H2 
or you can ask um, schema or not schema AI for an alternate handling. Description is generally the meta description. This ambiguated description is uh, just another version of it. Typically, it's a lot longer. I have a custom prompt that I wrote that does my descriptions and then gives me a disambiguated description. Uh, and then the abstract is essentially a summary of your article. Um, you, What I found for the abstract, this is, you have to do it post-publishing it. So you publish it and then you give the URL to Notebook LLM and ask it for a summary of it. And you get a really good um, abstract just off of that single um, just put your URL in. That's it. And then you'll get a good abstract uh, to throw in there. Audience types, uh, you can add multiples if you uh, want to. Um, typically, I do because you're – but, you know, obviously that just depends on you. But from a ranking perspective, it doesn't do much, but it could potentially be helpful if – you're looking for, like, you're in local, for example. You can go homeowners in the city. You're doing, if you're a contractor, homeowners in city, small businesses in city, commercial property owners in city. Um, and, and or look for audience types in your ad platforms, and you can put those in there uh, as well. Uh, it just kind of, you know. A little bit of trickery there. Is it going to make you rank higher or lower? Probably not. But it's, you know, if someone decides to leverage it, you got it there. Uh, language code is easy. English, German, Italian, whatever um, you want. Keywords, um, one, two, or three. Don't go stupid here. Google is not going to rank you because you put keywords in here. Just put your primary topic, keyword, or heading, and then... Um, maybe like four or five um, other words, or you can do some entities and engrams. If you're using a tool like Zista, for example, you can, they'll give you a list already. Um, go through that and keep it on point. Again, Google is not, it, it will not help you rank. I tested it. You can add as much as you fucking want in there. It's not going to help you rank higher. <laughs> so uh, just keep it on, keep it on point. Your about mentions, if you're using Zista or um, InLinks, you, you know what this is. I only use nowadays the Wikidata URL and the Google MRID URL. I don't use the Wikipedia URL. Um, I just don't find it necessary to have the Wikipedia in there. And I don't, I don't know if with the... the, the stance of how AI is going and etc like wikipedia doesn't seem the popular source list now in google in, across google so wikidata wikidata seems pretty good and then um wiki uh, the machine ids from google are pretty good so that's what i keep in there offers this is you if for you e-com folks that were looking for a template for e-com, this is kind of where it's at. So you have the offers and then the items offered. And essentially in this first box here is where you will put your category information. And then in the second box is you can put some supplemental prop um, um, supplemental products. The aggregate rating, you have to have this before Google. Google's rich snippets, it, you can't have offers without having aggregate rating in this item description of the products. You just have to have it. Um, Google wants it. So um, give it to them. Typically, if you're like a small business and these, you're offering um, services, this would be a service. And then you'd have to see if the rich snippet tools was using it. But for e -com specifically, uh, which the client that I did this for was e -com is uh, you have to have aggregate rating in there. They don't collect ratings on their individual products, though, but they do collect uh, ratings for their business overall. So in the, in our case, we had all we had the categories listed. There's 30, 50 categories, and we did 10, and then 50 products, one product out of each of those, and then we used the same aggregate rating across everything. And that's totally fine. And then you see this type seller organization. You notice there's no ad ID in there, and then there's an ad ID here. 
that is on purpose. I just want to have the organization and the URL in there. I don't want to use the ad ID because then it'll show this whole thing under every one of those product, under every, every individual one. So it'll repeat it. Let's say I use this 10 times. It would have repeated it 10 times. I don't want to do that. So I don't use the ad ID. Um, but it is here for organization in case I want to do it for other instances. But for the most part, I don't need to because publisher is going to be popped right in there. And I'm good to go. Uh, knows about is self-explanatory. Another thing, it doesn't rank, uh, but you can do it for um, like categories. I like using the categories in Google business profiles, those categories, listings, you could put those in the nose about, and that does pretty good social, same as profiles. Uh, I use the main ones, especially cause it's, uh, the organization that's going to fire off eventually the knowledge graph. So Pinterest, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, those are the ones that I like putting in here, uh, X. Uh, for the most part, you can add your citations and stuff like that. Um, typically, I don't get all crazy with that. Um, I'll do any, if anything of the citations, I'll do like Better Business Bureau, Chambers of Commerce, and any government sites that are listing, uh, listing the business. Uh, I'll put those in there, but I don't get too too crazy with it. Areas served, um, in general, it's just, you know, you can do city. You can build out that area served and, and do add a whole bunch of, um, like, uh, machine IDs for the cities. You can add the names and, and et cetera, et cetera, and build it out pretty well if you want to. Um, this example, I actually did that, but in the template, I can't show you how I did it without re revealing the website. <laughs> so, um, but this will work too. And if you know how to use area served, you can, you know, build that list out pretty good. And then aggregate rating is for the business for the site wide again, and then potential action of search. So it doesn't look like a whole lot. You're looking at it as going, oh, that's hardly anything. It's actually when I built this out, the schema uh, came out to about 600 lines, and that's after I cleaned it up. And that's not to say, oh, look, much better because we've got 600 lines. But really the about and mentions are really detailed out, and then the offers um, built it out really well. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to match the silo or the – major target categories the client wants to promote across the entire website because schema is reading or Google or the algorithms or even AI are reading these links, the URL listings that are showing up. Uh, so essentially I'm giving um, the links to the most popular or the what pages that I think are the most important right now. And I can change those at will if I want to. Just add new offers, delete offers, replace, et cetera, and, and change the primary across the entire website just by changing one um, section. Uh, so, And then the about and mentions, again, those you can, as you add products, remove products, you can add topics, remove topics, uh, et cetera. And because this particular... This has an area served because this particular company does sells products, but and they sell in the e store e com format, but they're not an e com. You have to call them up and order the thing, and then they'll deliver it to you and everything. And that's why there's an area served uh, for it for this one. Typically, an e com store wouldn't necessarily have area served, but this one does. Um, so, um, hopefully, you guys uh, like the template and. If you have any questions about it, again, in the video, you can leave it in under the comments of the YouTube video, or you can leave it in the comments here on the website. I do get these. I promise you I get them, and then I'll answer them and address them in a video format, either in long form like this or in a short uh, that way, uh, or make a, make a blog post and tell you about it So, and, and give you another template. So the next one is probably going to be web page. I think that's the next um, template that I have to, or, or the next schema that I have to write for a client. 
And that's going to be actually for this page here. You're going to get to see it here because I'll have um, the schema for the MP, the the audio, and I'll have the schema for the video once I add the video to this post, and then the schema for the article on there at the same time. So the web page schema that's coming is going to be pretty fat. Uh, and you'll get to see why um, the type of schema that I do is just you just don't want to do it for everything. It's just kind of no point. But this is a good target set of keywords to implementing schema. So uh, I'll be going all out on these on these posts. So um, hope you like it. Hope you have uh, uh, good use of it. If again, if you have questions, add your questions in the comments of the YouTube video or here. I do see them and I will answer them. Uh, and uh, enjoy your weekend.